need to direct your will to the sample design report for the bill and we will see how to design the bill with the help of the professor. So, in the case of bill, we require maximum positive moment, maximum negative moment, and the maximum input value for the design of bottom reinforcement, top reinforcement, and the tier input. So, to display the analysis results for the bill, go to display, click on show table. Click on analysis, click on results, same results, and click on import. Click on open. So, here you can see we have available the analysis results with respect to the story, beam level numbers, low cases, and the low combinations, and with respect to the different analysis parameters. So, here for the design report, we are going to design the beam which are at first floor, that is, this one. So here, for a design report, we are going to design this. That is the beam B1, which are at first floor. So you can see the beam which is at first floor, which has the label B1. This is a primary beam, 241, 225. So here our structure is symmetrical structure. So this is also similar beam on the other side, which follows the same design for this. So for this beam, the label number is. So for this beam, the label number is D2. To design the beam B1 and D2, we need to go for the first floor. Select the first floor. Get outside. So first of all, we will select the beam B1. Okay. And then we require the design of combination. Which are from A01 to A2. Get outside. So here you can see, we have the analysis results. With respect to the axial forces, shear forces, torsion, and the bending moment. So here you can see the axial forces and the beams are negligible and we don't require them. So similarly, the shear forces in the major axis. So here we are not touching the torsion because our beams are not a curved beam. So here you can see the minor bending moment is also negligible. So here what we require? There is a maximum shear force. Maximum positive value moment and maximum negative value. So let's first see what is the maximum shear force for the beam B1 at the first floor. So for that, click on weighting and start assignment. So go below. So in the column weighting, so here the maximum positive shear force is 54.4429 and the maximum negative shear force is minus 54.5851. Hence the maximum shear force value here is. 54.4429 So note down the value for the beam B1 at the first floor. So here in the Excel sheet for the first floor, here with respect to the beam B1 and B2, first of all note down the value maximum shear force, which is 54.4429. Now let's note down the value for the negative bending moment and the positive bending moment for the label number B1. For that, go to beta. Now click on LB, kilometer and beta. So here you can see the maximum negative bending moment for the beam B1 which are at first floor which has the load combination A10 is value minus 44.26 to 0 kilometer meter. Okay. And the maximum positive bending moment is go down and here can be 25 .0931. So we need to note down the value 25.0931 as the positive bending moment and the 44.26 is to do as the negative value. So note down the value. So you can see 44.26 is to do as the negative value moment as BM1 and 25.0931 as BM2 as the positive value moment. So you can also set the name as a new one and a new two. Okay. So similarly, now we need to note down the value for the new piece. Okay. So for that, we will do that. So now select the label as B2. Similarly, for the shear forces, for the assignment. So, here you can see for the B6 at the first floor, the maximum negative shear force value as minus 54.4221 and the maximum positive shear force value as 52.762. So, here the maximum value is 54.762. So, here you can see the value for the beam B6 is 54.762. So, here you can see the maximum value is 54.762. So, here you can see the maximum value is 54.762. So, here we need to neglect the signs, spelling movement, and shear force because we only need the magnitude of the respective parameters. Okay. So here the maximum shear force value we need to take a look at the size as 54.4281. So note down the value of the SSD, same as 54.4281. So 
bottom of the section that is tension reinforcement. So here we need to uh, consider the MU2 value. So here for that uh, calculation of bottom reinforcement in the formula we consider the bending moment as 25.0931 kN meter. Okay. So here we got the value of ASK as 267.07 mm square. So as per the codal coincidence we need to follow the notes which are provided below the clause 38.1 that should be that Q by D value here should be less than D's value. So, so here you can see the clause 38.1 which is the assumption for the limit state of collapse for the flexor. So for the flexor that is nothing but the bending. With respect to the grade of steel, as I score gives us the value for the SQ limiting by the D. So here we are used the SQ 415, so F1 is equal to 415 Newton per mm square. So here for our case, SQ limiting by the D value is 0.48. Here you can see, I have selected the value SQ limiting by D as 0.48. Okay, but I so far 6 and SQ gives us the formula to calculate the value of SQ by D. So here you can see, NXQ 3.1.1A gives us the formula to calculate the value of SQ by D which is equal to 0.87 for ASQ upon 0.36 FCK D. Okay. And the D note says that if the value of SQ by D that is D's value should be less than D's value that is provided in under the clause 38.1 in the note that is limiting value that means the section should be under in. And this is also good because under input sections has the advantages in the case of sculpture because it has the ductile behavior. So here with respect to the formula S2 by D is equal to 0.87 FY ASK upon 0.36 FCK BD. By inputting the value of FY ASK FCK BD, we got the value of S2 by D as 0.15, which is less than 0.48. That is nothing but means S2 by D is less than S2 limiting by D. That is our section is under input. If the SQ by D value is equal to SQ limiting by D, then section is balancing. And when the SQ by D value is more than SQ limiting by D, then the section is over in. Over in for section and the balance section are not recommended in case of the earthquake. So we should provide the section as the under input because it has the ductile behavior. So here our condition is satisfied and we can go for the area of steel. So we need to check this area of steel with respect to the minimum area of steel. So, minimum area of steel as per Indian standard colder provision states in clause 26.5.1.1. So, here you can see clause 26.5.1.1 is for the tension reinforcement in the beam, that is for the bottom part in the beam. Okay. So, here the clause states that, here you can see, this is the formula to calculate the minimum area of tension reinforcement. So, here we have all the values of G, D, and F1. So, with respect to the section size and the type of steel, we need to provide the minimum area of steel. So, here the minimum area of steel as per the codal provision is 140.5 mm square, which is less than the area of steel required as per the design. So, we need to provide the design area of steel in 10. So, here we need to provide the area of steel as 257.07 mm square. If the area of steel as per design is less than area of steel minimum, then we need to provide the area of steel minimum. So here in the case we need to provide the design area of steel as the calculator as per NX D. Okay. So to calculate the number of bars, so by the formula of ASP upon area of bar, we get the number of bars for the tension reinforcement. So here 257.07 upon the bar we are using is 12 mm. So pi by 4 into 12 square, we got the number of bars as 2.27. Rounding upon the higher side, we got the value as 3. So we need to provide 3 bars at the bottom for the tension reinforcement. So in the detailing it will look like this. That is 3 bars in the whole section we need to provide at the bottom. Okay. So this is the design for the positive bending moment. That is for MU2 25.0931 kN per meter. Okay. So now we need to calculate the shear reinforcement. So for that we need to take into the consideration this value that is shear force maximum which is equal to 54.4429 kN. That is the maximum shear. So, for the design of shear reinforcement, we need to follow the codal provisions of clause 40 of IS 45. Clause 40 states the limit state of collapse for the shear. In which the clause 40.1 states the nominal shear stress in the section, which is as per the formula tau V is equal to V upon BD, whereas V is the shear force due to the design load. Hence, here by the design load, 
we have the CO4 value is 54.4421 kN. That is from ETAC analysis result. So by putting the value in the formula, tau V is equal to V upon V, we got the value of tau V as 0.79 Newton per mm square. And for our B, the nominal shear stress is 0.79 Newton per mm square. But we also need to find the value of tau, which is from table number 90. These are shear strength of concrete in Newton per mm square. So for the tau C value, we require the percentage of steel and the grade of concrete that will be used. So here for the area of steel, we need to follow the number of parts that were provided in the tension. So here in the tension we are provided three numbers of bars. So for the three number of bar, the area of steel provided will be area of bar into the C bar that is 5 by 4 into D square into 3 which comes around to be 339.29 square. So this is the ASC provided. So for these ASC provided we will calculate the resistance with 100 into ASC upon BD is equal to the percentage of C that is 100 into ASC provided that is 339.29 yes and D into D that is 242 That is we got the percentage of C as 0.49 percentage. So for 0.49 percentage whereas we are using the M25 rate of concrete hence for 0.49 percentage its value it comes around in between this 0.25 and 0.50. So with respect to these values we need to consider these columns which is of M25 rate of concrete. So for 0.25 the value of tau C is 0.36 and for 0.50 the value of tau C is 0.49 whereas we require the value for 0.49 which is in between these. So for that we need to use the linear interpolation. So take down the value first. So here I have take down the value so you can see. So for the 0.25 the tau C value is 0.36 and 0.50 the tau C value is 0.49. So for this area of C is 0.49 percentage the tau C value will be by the linear interpolation of 0.4848 Newton per mm square. Okay. So here you can see the, our tau C value that is 0.4848 is less than the tau V value that is 0.79. So as per Indian standard 456 clause 41C says that minimum shear reinforcement that is tau V value is less than tau C then the minimum shear reinforcement should be provided with respect to the clause 26.5.1.6. So here you can see our tau C value is more than tau v value, not less than. So here we need to provide the design shear reinforcement. If the tau v value, that is this value, 0.79 value, if it is less than this value, then we need to provide the minimum shear reinforcement as per the clause 26.5.1.6. But here not the case. Here our case is that our tau v value is more than the tau c value. Hence so we need to provide the design shear reinforcement. To provide the design shear reinforcement, we need to follow the clause 44 that is design shear reinforcement. So here you can see when the tau v value exceeds tau c value, the design shear reinforcement should be provided. So there are three different types of shear reinforcement to resist the shear force. That is vertical shear, bend the path along with the stirrup and inclined shear. So here we are going with the vertical shear. You can also provide the bend the path along with the stirrup or inclined shear. So for the vertical stirrup we need to follow the note A. So here the note A says the formula Vs is equal to 0.875 ASVB upon S. Whereas S is the spacing of shear reinforcement and the ASC is the area of shear reinforcement. So area of shear reinforcement depending on the number of legs to the stirrup. So here we are providing the two leg stirrup. Hence the area of shear reinforcement is area of rebar into the leg of stirrup. So here 2 legs stirrup hence 5 by 4 into the square into 2 is the case. So to use this formula we require the value of VUS. We have only the VUS. Okay. So as per Indian standard the VUS formula is VU minus tau C into BD. Whereas tau C as we calculated by the interpolation is 0.4848. Okay. So by putting the value of VU tau C B and D in this formula we got the value of VUS as 21.151 kN. So by considering this value and the other values in this formula, we got the value of S. That is the spacing for the shear reinforcement. So by putting the value here, we got the spacing for the shear reinforcement as the 5 into 1, 23 mm. Okay. So this is the spacing as per design. Okay. But as per any standard order provision, the maximum spacing for the shear reinforcement should be 0.75 d or 300 mm. So 0.75 d that is with to depth that is used calculated as 26 mm that is will be 0.75 d is equal to 24.5 mm or 300 mm or 
5 to 12 months. So with respect to these three values, we need to consider the minimum value. So here the minimum value is 2 and 4.5 months. So by considering these values and rounding up on the lower side, we got the value as 200 mm. So here we are going to provide the shear enforcement as 2 less scale up of 8 mm tall at 200 mm center distance. Okay. So these are the shear enforcements we are need to provide as per as per this design. So here you can see the detailing for the tension reinforcement and the shear enforcement. So here you can see the tension reinforcement as per the design is 3 bar. So here we are providing the 3 bar at the bottom from the shear cover of 25 mm and the shear reinforcement of 2 less shear up of 8 mm tall at 200 mm center center distance. So this is the detailing other than support. At the support we need to consider the negative bending moment and with respect to that moment we got the different number of bars at the top. So here we are providing the shear reinforcement. So for that here we are providing the minimum two number of bars for that. So this minimum two number of bars is for the shear reinforcement. So here you can see now we have done with these both values that is positive bending moment and maximum shear. Now we require these values to calculate area of shear in the compression that is from the negative bending moment that is hogging moment. 44.2739 kN. So, as we calculated the tension reinforcement, similarly we need to find the compression reinforcement. Only the value for the bending moment will be changed. That is, there is positive value we will consider. So, here we consider the bending moment value as negative bending moment. Okay, so here the negative bending moment value is 44.2652 kN meter. So, similarly, as per annex C, we have the formula that is mu is equal to condition of first case into D. In the bracket 1 minus AS upon F bar BD into SP. So we need to find the AS. So here we need to input all the values. By inputting the value, we got here the area of steel in the compression that is AS is 477.123 mm square. Okay. So similarly, we need to check the section as the under input or not. So for that, as code also gives us the formula to calculate the value of SQ by D that is 0.87 F bar AS upon. 0.36 SPK BD, which is provided in the G.1.1.1 A. By inputting all the values, we got the value of SQ by D is 0.369. Hence, which is less than 0.48 for the FY41. Hence, our section is under input. So, we need to check the area of steel in the compression with respect to the minimum area of steel. So, minimum area of steel is 140. So, here we need to provide area of steel. In compression as well design that is 477.123. Okay, so to calculate the number of parts in the compression, we need to consider these area of steel. So, number of parts is equal to area of steel upon the area of one bar. So, here we are going to provide 12 mm tall bar as the compression relation. Hence, the ASC that is equal to 477.123 upon 5 by 4 into 12 square. Hence, we got the value as 4.21. So, rounding up on the higher side, we got the value as 5 bar. So, hence, we need to provide the 5 watt of 12 mm tor at the support. So, here the detailing will be there. That is, C bar as the uh, tension reinforcement is all along the beam, but C 5 watt only at the support for the distance 2 D. That will be discussed in the next section. So, stating for the shear reinforcements as per the I 4920 for the ductile detailing will be discussed in the next section. Because here we are providing the SMRF that is special moment resistance, so we need to also consider the retaining requirements of the IS 1920. If you consider in the design the frame as the OMRF that is ordinary moment resistance, then this is the last step for you to design the beam. But if you select the SMRF, then you need to also check 